Hey, Dave. Good afternoon. How are you today? Hey, John. I'm great. I'm great. Good to see you again this week. Absolutely. Here we are again. Uh, for those joining, welcome to The Jump Seat. The Jump Seat is a weekly spotlight bringing you key industry insights, uh, thought leadership, and subject matter experts hosted by two Jump Seat firefighters, myself, Dave, or myself, John, and Dave with me here today. Uh, we're here again for number 22 today, actually, which is wild, but uh, every Friday, this is our uh, this is our thing. So glad for those who are able to join again, and we've got some uh, great information coming here today. Um, Dave, what's what's new, man? How are you? Hey, I'm I'm great. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's it was a, a crazy week, uh, as I know it has been for probably many of us out there, um, but uh, even more so in the in the fire service. I, I know um, uh, we've been kind of both John and I monitoring what's going on in the West Coast, and you know we're we're both kind of fortunate that we're not dealing with wildfires ourselves. But uh, you've been watching any of that? John? I have. Yeah, I uh, saw. You know, there's been a lot of stuff obviously press and, and articles and it looks like it gets better and then you see more taken off and kicking off with those daily reports and um just wanted to send some heartfelt just uh thoughts to the um el dorado area uh they had a, a recent fatality actually here i think it was yesterday or within the yeah i think it was yesterday um just a tragic situation um our hearts are with that whole uh crew uh, as well as the department and everyone involved um it's just, it, and if you read into that situation, it was actually started by uh, some people doing a gender reveal party. So, unfortunate all the way around. My, uh, I guess the only thing I have to say is we just need to be aware of where we're at in the world. And if we're in any sort of that region, we just need to do everything we can to mitigate risk with all the existing challenges we're facing right now. So, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, we know many of the of the folks who have responded out there and it's not just, you know, the folks of California. It's not just the folks of of Washington, Oregon. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people there. Actually, I saw um, Houston just deployed a, 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 a crew this week, um, Houston Fire out of Texas with the National Incident Response Team. And, mm -hmm. and so they were heading out to give support. I think they were heading to California specifically. But yeah, yeah um, I, actually, our original guest who was supposed to be on the show today is actually out working a wildfire right now and said he apologized last week hey guys i'm not going to be able to make it so that's right you know yep. i i just uh, be safe out there to all yep. those working on the west coast um, we know those conditions can be dangerous we've seen you know images and video of fire tornadoes and and uh, the massive scorching that's happening and obviously as you said the yeah the tragedy that happened there on the el dorado fire um mm -hmm. yesterday afternoon so um so maybe, maybe we'll switch gears a little bit here. And I, I got a little yep. brighter note. And actually, this one hits close to home, like right here in home for me. And that, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's it's always interesting to see your local departments or your local dispatch centers in the local media. Uh, but what I wasn't expecting was to see some of the cool technology that we're rolling out and, and playing with here locally hit the national media. And so... Um, our local uh, dispatch center here in uh, Worcester, Ohio, it's called the War Cog. Um, they're actually getting some recognition because they're actually trialing um, a new set of software. It's called uh, 911i. Uh, and so it, it had been in service over in uh, the UK here for a period of time already. Um, but essentially what happens is you make a phone call on your mobile device, right, to dispatch mm -hmm. uh, as a bystander for a, a, um, a particular incident, whether it be a fire, uh, a car accident, uh, for that matter, a medical emergency. And they can now send you a link. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they can now send you a link uh, back to your phone. You click the link and it now puts a live stream directly from your cameras to the dispatchers. And then they can actually then connect it directly to the trucks or officers in route. So you can get a firsthand look of what the fire scene looks like. The dispatcher can say, hey, John, Thanks for calling mm -hmm. us in. I tell you what, I'm going to send you this link. I want you to walk around the entire structure and give me the 360 view. Right. Give me the 360 walk around of what it looks like now. Yeah. Or, hey, let me help you perform CPR correctly mm -hmm. and, and set your phone so I can see you. I'll give you, you know, specific instructions. 
So, so instead of our instead of our fire scene being on Facebook Live before the the crew can even see it, it's going to the the crew responding. So that's you got it. phenomenal, you got awesome. It. I cannot wait it's, to see that come to fruition. So it's cool stuff, and they yep. they've been trying it here over the last couple of weeks. They actually did. Mm -hmm. uh, there was actually some mock burns that they did uh, scenarios just to trial it out, uh, yeah. and I, and they're giving it I think a thirty or sixty day trial period here, which is kind of cool. It's, it, and it, like Super. I said, that's right here in my local uh, county, our local town. And yeah. the local dispatch center. So awesome to the guys at the war car yeah. there and uh, uh, keep up you the good bet. work and driving technology. Awesome. Yeah, Dave. So before uh, we switch gears, the title here, I'm going to put the title in front of everybody here. The word autopsy, right? So tell us and give us give us some info. We had we had some people going, what are you, what, what are you talking about? Why yeah, why that yeah. word? You know, uh, in all seriousness, we 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 kind of set on this title of, hey, we're going to do the autopsy of a fire pump today. And so you know, it, it stirred up a little controversy on the social media front. You know, there was one, uh, uh, Kurt uh, Zingham. Hey, Kurt, I hope you're watching today. And I hope you get the gist here once we get into this. But, uh, you know, uh, he, he kind of said, hey, man, uh, autopsy sounds a little creepy. What are you talking about? I think probably anatomy of a fire pump is better. Well, let me just tell you what. That's a great segue into this segment, John. And uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately... You know, um, you try to think you want to know about the anatomy of a pump, but that's one perspective of it. But what do you do when your pump is dead? What do you do when you killed it? Right. Or you didn't even know you were killing it. You were actually giving it the cancer to cause catastrophic failure or massive incidents, right? Mm -hmm. When it's dead, you got to figure out why. And you got to right. understand what has caused that problem and, and, uh, and actually do an autopsy. So we're going to break apart some of the common things that happen on the fire ground today. And we've got uh, uh, an incredible guest who's extremely knowledgeable with us. But we're going to break down that pump and, and common mistakes that, that have happened on the fire ground that actually can cause serious and really detrimental impacts to the pump itself. And so, Alan Hamill, welcome to the jump seat. For those of you who don't know, Alan is on the team with us here at IDEX Fire and Safety. And and Alan, we know we pitched it uh, to you pretty quickly here last week to say, hey, can you jump on since our guest is out, uh, our planned guest was out uh, fighting wildfires. But Alan, uh, you know, welcome uh, to the jump seat. Tell us a little bit more about yourself, Alan, and your background, what you do at IDEX Fire and Safety, and your background also as a firefighter. Huh? Great. Thanks, guys, for letting me come on today. I, I hate your other guests backed out, but it gives us an opportunity to talk about, you know, some of our products and, and how we determine whether they were damaged by, you know, just uh, misuse or or whether something went through the pump. You never know. And and determining some of that sometimes is a challenge. But uh, so I am the manager of training for Hale Products. Um, I've been with Hale about five years and uh, started in a different section doing trailers, skid units, marine uh, on the sales side. And, and then I got asked to take over the training program. So I handle all our training needs uh, throughout Hale. Um, so, you know, we live here in a little town called Gold Hill, North Carolina, and that's where I'm at today. I'm actually in my shop, and, and I'll step out of the way just a second, and you can look on my table behind me. Um, you can see the portable I have sitting here. That's a, that's a project I'm working on for, for future classes, shooting videos. So that's why I'm in the shop today is, is I'm trying to get some of that stuff ready to uh, send out. to uh, Since we're not able to travel because of COVID, we're, we're looking for other ways to uh, – uh, keep our customers up to date and uh, abreast of, of training. And Alan, you've kind of had to become over the last few months uh, a lot more innovative with with training, both in person, but also creating videos and virtual training to pass on. We still need to know the information, but we aren't able to physically be everywhere like we used to be. So you've had to kind of shift a little bit to being a little more uh, Make a little production out of your shop there. <laughs> yeah, and, and we'll, I want to talk about that as we get later in the show. Um, yeah. We've got some things coming, and we'll we'll talk about that as we get get to the end of the show today. Do a little surprise at the end. Awesome. Well, hey, Alan, I, before we go diving into this autopsy piece a little bit further, I got just a quick question for you. Um, you know what we're talking about today. You know, this isn't just for hail pumps, is it? No, no, not at all, not at all. It a lot of the uh, there's a common theme behind. The things we see in pumps, whether it's ours or our competitors, um, a lot of the things that the firefighters are doing, or or misuse of the pump, or uh, things, and that that's really what causes the problems we see. I, look, it's a piece of machinery. Um, it's it's man-made. You, you're going to have problems, right? I mean, that's just 
It's whether you want them or not, that's part of it. Um, but determining what actually caused that problem is what everybody wants to know and how not to let it happen again. I think that's the, the main uh, objective here is, is we hope you, you can figure out what happened to your pumper. We can help you figure that out so you don't have those issues going forward. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Alan, in your role, I know you and, and actually the whole team at Hale, they're handling customer service calls on a regular basis. And I, I, I think an autopsy probably isn't easy, right? It's not simple to figure out what happened. You know, no, so, not, not at all. <laughs> so walk me through the steps of, of what you do to, to try to decipher what went wrong and how that process works. If I, if I call in to, to Hale today and say, hey, my pump's not working. Well, we've got a great, we've got a great, great technical service team to start with, and and most of those calls are going to, and and they're going to ask for help over the phone. Um, you know, we're going to try to get them all the help we can that way. Um, if it comes to a point that the pump is completely inoperable, um, you know, and you want to send parts in for us to analyze, or you want to send us pictures, and usually if you're calling over the phone, we're going to ask for pictures and to help you. Uh, determine what happened, whether it's under warranty or out of warranty. You know that doesn't make any difference. We want to again. We want to make sure that we can figure out exactly what happened to your pump, um, so you can quit having issues. Um, so a couple of things we're going to talk about today, really. Uh, you know, um, and one of the first ones, and we'll before I, I got a little uh, presentation, I'll bring up and we'll talk about through some of this. But one of the one of the first things that we see is is sometimes some damage from from water hammer. Um, I know there's quite a bit of training going along from uh, the firefighters all over the country um, of how to straighten out your hose lines and and those types of things and and so water hammer um, is is a very very real thing um, that pressure that comes back through the line uh, when it reaches the pump it could be as much as five times as much uh, as you were putting out through the nozzle so um, I think uh, John Dutton uh, Akron has something there along the way that helps some of that I believe. Um, do, yeah. So our uh, our Mercury Quick Attack had been around for many years, very successful, lightweight, uh, portable ground monitor. But uh, we have since pr provided a additional layer of protection or safety to the pump and the crew like we're talking about right now with things such as a hard slam of water or if, if the monitor were to get uh, loose or not be set properly or someone were to knock it over while while flowing instead of it coming down and shutting quickly, which like what you're saying can send a, basically a shock wave of water at the impeller. This is something that's called the uh, flow guard. And what the flow guard does is it reduces flow to a third instead of completely closing it off. So it minimizes and eliminates that damage that may, may occur otherwise with other, uh, other hard closes. Right. Right. You know, and sometimes we even, even in our houses, sometimes if we shut the water off too fast, you'll hear the pipes, rattling inside the house and it's the same it's the same type of thing and part of the problem or what we see throughout the industry is is we'll get this water hammer and you don't really know what caused it i mean it, it's hard to tell this water hammer um but but you got to remember that shock wave not only goes back to the pump but it's going to drive it's going to go all the way back to the drive line it's going to go back into the transmission and back into the engine um it could cause catastrophic damage um, and, and look, most people say, well, your mechanical reliefs, pressure reliefs will, will take care of that. Well, you know, if they're on the pumps, um, they'll help some, but that's not going to stop that, that shock wave that comes back through the pump. So, um, for anybody watching, here's a link to what I was just describing. If anybody wants to see that visually, it's right there. So Alan, go ahead. Sorry about that. No, no, you're, that's good. No, and, and it's great that the industry is coming up with new products that, that help minimize and help uh, firefighters do their jobs better. So um, what I'll do here is. So, we'll Alan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead you into that one there, too. And, and so okay. obviously you see a lot with uh, water hammer and impacts can be immen immense, whether it be a hose exploding or the impact back to the pump of the drivetrain that you're talking about. But maybe maybe really quick. What are the three top areas you see? in doing these autopsies that are the problem areas uh, in the fire service that we're probably going to dive into here in a second. Yeah. So, so really uh, cavitation is probably one of the larger ones. Uh, we see a lot of damage caused by cavitation and, and look, most firefighters don't know they're even doing it. Um, you'll go out and teach classes where, where they're running the pump and they just don't understand it. 
Um, and, and that's very, very common throughout the industry where, where they're out running pumps. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's ours or somebody else's. It, it can cause damage uh, no matter whose it is. Um, adjusting packing, you know, keeping that, keeping your packing adjustment and keeping causing damage to your pump is another one. Um, hey, just basic maintenance, really. Um, some of it's just checking oil in your gearboxes or your T cases, what, you know, some mechanics call them T cases, technicians do. So, um, you know, those are, those are some easy ones that, that we can talk about today that, uh, you know, are pretty common. And, and I'm going to show you some pictures of some of the things that we see. Um, and some of these are some that customers have actually sent me. Um, and we, you know, we hope nobody's pumps get this way. Um, and we that's why we want to talk about it today that maybe, maybe some of you will uh, give you enough information or, Again, my email is is on the show, and and you're more than welcome to reach out on our our Hill Products webpage. Um, my contact information is there as well, both email and cell phone number. Uh, you, anyone at any time is more than welcome to call, and I'll help you do what we can to get you the right information. Um, Perfect. Well, let's let's point. dive right in. And you mentioned one right at the bat. Right. You said most most firefighters don't even know what cavitation is. They don't even know when they're cavitating. So, what is cavitation, and what actually happens there? So, I'm trying to get this to share here, Dave. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. We're good. We'll get there. It. Uh, all right. Sorry, guys. It's not going to cooperate today. No worries, no worries. While you're doing that, you know, uh, you Roger, we. Hello, back to you, man. Glad you're joining us as well uh, uh, today. Um, and Mario Paz uh, Pupito, sorry about the translator option uh, not working. Uh, wish it was better on that one. Um, we'll have to do our, our best to try to pick up on uh, there we go, Alan. languages in the future as well. Definitely. Okay, Alan, I, I think we got you up here on the on the board. You're on. All right. Perfect. There we go. There we go. Now we're getting there. Sorry about that, guys. A little technical difficulties. I thought I had it ready to go, but it didn't want to didn't want to start. So it's all um, good. So again, the first thing we'll talk a little bit about is cavitation. Um, and again, Dave, you asked, what is cavitation? Well, cavitation is really um, it, it's caused, and it, it's when water, a liquid, um, changes to a vapor and then back to a liquid. And and what you see is a um, a bubble. It creates a little air bubble. And when that bubble hits the impeller eye, and I'm sitting here behind me. I, can y'all see me as well through the? Yep. Oh, yeah. There you go. So, you know, when that bubble hits this impeller eye and then it discharges off the other side, what we're looking at in our other picture is actually um, our cut water or cutting edge that takes the water away from the impeller. Can you show us that again? Sorry, I was trying to get your screen oh, in water. There we go. Okay, Go sure. Uh, there in the shot. Yeah, I've got two things behind me. So here's the impeller, <laughs> the eye of the impeller, there right? And those bubbles, once they hit, they explode right in front of this, and and that force of that explosion is what causes all of the damage inside of the pump. And and you usually you'll see that you'll see some eye damage. Um, what I see more than anything is the damage here, the damage to the to the cut water cutting edge. Um, you can see this particular picture. You can see it blew holes in it. And, and when a pump gets like this, um, it's usually uh, you lose some type of either volume or pressure. You, you know something's degrading and you're having trouble either passing pump tests or, or you're having trouble, trouble actually throwing water as far as you used to do it. So there's usually some, some alter alternative problems there. So here's another one. Um, this one's a little harder to see and I apologize. It's not a great picture, but this one actually that had been doing it so long that it actually ate away about a quarter of the cut water. It actually blew it completely out. And, and that area in the pump is, is over a quarter inch thick. It's not a little thin piece of metal. It's actually really thick. Um, so again, these are when I, and, and here's a new one I'll show. I, I did an, I actually brought up a new one so you guys could see that. Um, and that's the picture of what it should look like when it comes out, right? <laughs> but that, you know, again, um, these are this is easily preventable. Um, this is what this is 
when I see the pitchers and, and sometimes they'll call and say, hey, I want warranty. You know, the pump's not any good. I'm like, wait a minute. That's that's abuse. That That's truly abuse um, to a pump. And um, and a lot of people don't understand it. They don't know the sounds of it. And, and for those that don't, it, it sounds like you threw a handful of rocks into the pump. Um, and so if you hear that sound, know that you're damaging your pump. Sometimes you get the truck shaking a little bit too with it, right? If it's, if it's yeah, bad yeah. It, as it, well. can, it can create some pretty severe vibrations. Um, and again, I, I, I've Roger seen some. Says, real Holy, real smokes. Holy smokes is right when uh, <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to hear the, the sound of rocks running through the pump. That, that's probably not rocks. Yeah. It's probably well, it could be, but it's probably yeah. cavitating, and that's very bad. Well, that's not rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, what we talked about this. I had some pictures, and I was going to show. Uh, of some material, some debris that's come out of some of the pumps, you know, over the years that customers yeah. have sent me, but you, you know, that can cause damage as well. But we're today we're just the cavitation is what we're looking at in these. Hey, Alan, how long does that cavitation yeah. need to take place for damage like that to occur? You know, with the, the, uh, the picture I showed you, the first picture I showed you was about three years old. That particular pump was, a, was, was pretty new, I would say. Um, that was actually came back as, as a claim. We, we were trying to uh, decide on warranty and some different things. Um, but that particular department, we actually went back and said, hey, we need to, we need to work with you on your, uh, make sure you understand what cavitation is and, and what's causing it um, in your fleet. So, so you don't have things like this happen. So. Definitely. So cavitation only takes a few seconds, right? It doesn't need to be. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't no. need to cavitate it for five minutes and to create that kind of damage. It no, really you don't. And yeah, exactly. And it needs to have. It can happen very rapidly before you know it. You can. You can do it. And I have done it myself. I, I admit. You know, you'll be pumping a truck, and and it's not hard to uh, give the hose. Somebody calls for more water. And you don't have it and you try to send it to them anyway i mean you can you can create it in many different ways but you know when you're trying to put out a fire and all the things that are going on during the fire you know of course the end game for us is is public safety and and making sure the guy on the end of that line and the people in that house we save what we can save so you know sometimes i tell people you know we really think about it you know you don't want to damage your pump but if it means the pump or somebody's life in the house it's always the life that you want to save so um, you know, again, one of those things that you, you try to educate your, your firefighters and your operators of your pump uh, to understand what that sounds like so you can eliminate it really quick if it starts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, just the efficiency loss. You know, uh, Alan, I know you teach on this a lot, but a new pump that's rated at 1500 and, and a abused pump rated at 1500, that truck is working either very the RPMs are very low or they can be very high based on the efficiency of that pump and things yeah. like cavitation uh, affect that greatly. And, and you should be able to cost. see that from year to year, you should be able to see that on your, on your annual pump test as well. That yeah. should show up. You know, and, and I think one thing that is probably important to point out, you know, um, at IDEX Fire and Safety, we've done a number of things to try to help prevent cavitation from occurring. And so if you're utilizing, you know, any of our, uh, newer um, pressure governors, the TPG, TPG Plus, the Century, all of them are actually outfitted with special uh, code in them to identify cavitation, bring it to the attention of the operator, and back the pack, back the trucks back down and not cause pump damage. Additionally, that's one of the biggest benefits of SAM, is SAM doesn't let you get to the point of cavitation. It alerts you right away. It actually won't take you to a cavitational mode and uh and really helps you from from creating some of this massive catastrophes inside the pump that can can really happen if you uh if you are unaware of it That's which correct. also yeah. plays into twice the warranty right <laughs> with sam versus others which to me is just amazing but anyway for anybody wondering twice the warranty because of what we just said and that's this is thinking quicker than we can see gauges by the time it's happening, it's already reacting as well and, and saving that pump. So pr pretty cool stuff right. that's, that's um, yeah. the technology, around. Technici technicians, and again, I teach class, uh, you know, 36 weeks out of the year, I'm on the road teaching classes and, and I get a lot of feedback. We, we you know, Sam's been out. And we've It's going around the country again uh, to different people, but the technology is amazing and what we can do uh, with that technology. And, 
And so you get a lot of technicians that are like, yeah, I don't like water and electricity don't mix and, and different things. But, you know, things are changing. And technicians today are different than they were 20 years ago. I, even myself, and I, I've told a lot of the guys that, you know, I really – and I've had Sam in here a couple of times. I had actually had it in here last week. I got to play with him a little while out here. I've got a dry hydrant. It just happened to be in the neighborhood, so I got to play with it a little bit. But, you know, you it's amazing – um, what the new guys and the new the young men coming through their technicians today, what they're able to do with this. I mean, you can just hook to it and, and check everything. It tells you what's wrong, and it's it, it's so much. Um, there's so many things that you can do with it that we never could do before, and I'm sure there's more coming. I mean, you know, the engineers that are designing this stuff is, are, you know, extremely bright, and so um, I'm pretty excited about some of the technology that, that IDEX has been able to put out. Definitely. Alan, what do we got next here? I know time, we could talk for hours. What, oh, what yeah. do we got next? What's our next uh, analysis we're going to be going over of autopsy? So we're going to talk about this just a minute. Packing, and I put mechanical seal on here too. That's that's just a little add-on. But um, the packing piece of this for me is pretty simple. Um, and this first picture, um, to me, that's not terrible. Um, you can see uh, You can see the bolts. Uh, where the water has been running this this is a packing pump um, you can see where the water has been running down and, and you can see the, the the buffer laying on the on the table there he's trying to clean those bolts up enough and get them out um, so he can take this all apart because he can't adjust it anymore there is no adjustment left um, but this is pretty common this is one of those things that um, and this doesn't take long depending on your water and what how bad it is or how good it is um, you know, how much damage it can cause and how quickly. Um, and a lot of people know their water. Um, there's a lot of fire pumps today that are ordered without any protection in them. And we'll talk about that just a little bit later here in the show. But um, in this, this scenario here is more the fact that, hey, it hadn't been adjusted properly. Um, it's just the time that it should have been being adjusted all along. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes it gets it gets a lot worse. Um, here's one from a customer. Again, most of these pictures that I have are from customers. Um, here's one that a customer sent me that is way worse. I mean, this one's going to have to have quite a quite a few parts put in it. Um, split glands, the adjusted yeah. nut, probably both sides of the nut. Um, and you know, if you'll do these types of things a little long, they won't get this far. Um, they did save the housing on this particular unit. Um, but it did have to have a few more parts and pieces and, and it was a little more costly when they sent it out to an outside shop to have it repaired. So just, wow. just adjusting, just adjusting your packing is, is, is really important. Um, here's another one. I, I thought this one, this wow. is an old, this one's from a ways back. I actually, uh, Rick told my predecessor in my position and actually gave me this, this picture and, and this, uh, if, Again, when your pump comes into the shop or comes back to the bay after being on the fire scene, um, it really shouldn't, it shouldn't drip. It shouldn't leak. Um, you know, the only time it should be leaking is when it's pumping. you got to keep lubrication to that packing. Um, but when it's sitting still and not pumping, that thing should not be running water all over the floor of, of your firehouse. Um, and if it is, it needs to be addressed. Wow. So, um, you know, yeah, Dave, go ahead. I, I was just going to lead you down the next path there. And so, you know, obviously packing uh, uh, is a key piece. How often should I pack it or should I adjust it? And when do I need to make those adjustments? Uh, maybe, you know, because a lot of times the, the mechanics or the mechanical side of the guys, the, the repair shops know that. But me as a firefighter, I, I, I just drive my truck. I put it in pump, right. I run the pump. When do I need to make sure that pa that packing is adjusted? How do I know right. to get it done? Right. Great question, Dave. So, so again, anytime that that packing, if, if that truck's sitting in the bay, um, not on a call and it's dripping, then it, it needs to be adjusted. Um, Hale recommends every two to three years it's replaced. Um, I will tell you that most guys laugh at me when I tell them that. Um, most of them replace it when it's so worn out that you can't adjust it anymore. 
Uh, but that's real life. I mean, we tell you what we think. I do have some customers that are religious about every three years, they will replace it. And it's so much easier. Um, that job can be done in, in less than an hour if, if it's fresh and it's not hard to get to. Uh, once it gets to some of these, these you know, places where it's as hard as it looks in these pictures, you, you can't get it out. You have to take the pump apart to, to get it out of there. So, um, yeah, Alan, while you're talking, I'm just showing an example. Uh, this is our QMAX midship. Uh, on every right. operating manual, this is included, and this is going to outline. Here we've got weekly, and as we go down, we'll see monthly, right? And then even annual stuff. So we don't we won't go through all this today for the sake of time. But for anybody that doesn't know when the stuff should be done, let us know, and we'll get you your manual if you don't have it already. So, yeah, and that's on our website. That's the mm -hmm. muscle pump manual. It comes right out of our muscle pump manual, and and um, it's very closely related to NFPA and their rules about checking things and stuff as well. So Definitely. Um, it's, it's really nice to have that. Well, just a tool available for everybody out there. Yeah. So back to adjusting the packing. Um, again, if, if it's the other time, other times you need to adjust it, you need to correct drip rate. You can cause a lot of damage if you get it too tight. So um, if you're going to adjust it, make sure your drip rate rates proper, um, you know, for, for our Q max, um, that's about 30 drips per minute is what we like to recommend, um, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and you know, a little more, a little less, I mean, if it's close to that, it's good. Um, but you don't want it not to be dripping because you'll burn the packing up. It's got to have water to work properly. Um, which leads me into the other thing, I guess that, that way I talk about is, is mechanical seals. Just a few minutes, just a real brief. I don't have any pictures. Um, with me, um, I was actually, that's what I was actually doing on this portable behind me was, was doing the video of mechanical seal replacement. But, you know, a lot of people today, uh, a lot of fire departments have gone to mechanical seals. Um, it is easier. Um, you don't have to worry about adjusting it. If it leaks, something's wrong with it. Um, somebody's done something that, that they shouldn't have. And, and generally what we find in mechanical seals is they're shattered. Um, you'll get these pictures of where they're just, they're made out of a ceramic material and, and they're cold shocked a lot of times. So they'll be running the pump, they get it a little warm, um, and they forget to open the tank to pump. They're not, not getting any fresh water into it. And they'll reach up and grab the tank to pump real quick and they'll go, and then all of a sudden, boom, when that cold water hits that hot seal, it just shatters it all to pieces. And so that's what we see most of the time in mechanicals. Um, there's mechanicals that have been out there. Mechanical seals have been out there for 20 years and never given any problems. Um, it has a whole lot to do with the training of the firefighters. Um, we, uh, we, we encourage them to make sure they understand, especially if you're switching from packing to mechanical seals, that you always have water on them when you're running them. So. Well, what's the, what's the next one? So we've kind of got cavitation. We've got yep. you know, improper, you know, regular PMs kind of, or, or adjusting of the, uh, the packing. What, what's the third big one that you see on a regular basis? So let's talk about gearbox oil. <laughs> so one of the things that we see a lot of times, you, you get these calls where, um, and most of us who have driven a fire truck or have operated a fire truck, understand what that grinding sounds like when you improperly put the pump into gear. Um, that's one of the things, uh, but most of the time it's more of a maintenance issue here where they don't have the proper amount of oil in the gearbox. Um, this particular picture that I'm showing now, and, and I'm not sure how that shows in, uh, on our broadcast, but if you look kind of out towards the end of the teeth of that gear, um, there's actually turned kind of an orange, orange color. Um, and what's happened here is this particular box didn't did not have enough oil in it. It was very very low in oil, and the teeth on this gear, this particular gear, are extremely sharp. Um, and you can tell when somebody sends one in that put too much oil versus not enough oil. Um, you can really tell. And that, and this particular picture, again, is from lack of oil, and uh, it's it's pretty pretty telling when you get that. And and guys are like. Hey, where do I fill this oil to? Where do I, 
you know, how do I know what the level is? Well, in, in a midship, in our in our G gearbox and K gearboxes, on the actual gearbox itself, it tells you above the plug what the level is. And you want to put it right to the bottom of the hole. Um, 90 weight or equivalent all in our midship gearboxes for these. And uh, so we'll, we'll, let me show you another one. So here's your another one. Um, and again, these pictures all come, these actually have all come from customers, these few pictures here. Um, and you can see the teeth missing here. And here's the other one, the mate to it. That's the two that run together. Hmm. Real quick on that note, I'm going to actually, I'm going to share my screen real quick. So this came to me actually in the last 24 hours from a, uh, here we go. Let me add it in. This came from a, uh, one of our customers. This, this truck was out West. Uh, on one of the uh, many assignments going on right now. And I just thought it was kind of relevant to our discussion. But um, one thing we're doing at Hale is we, we are all hands on deck trying to get parts back out as soon as possible to get them back up and running. But this is a bearing here that you can see was just obliterated here with, with heat and uh, wasn't there. Can't say what happened or didn't happen. But uh, knowing the situation uh, overall out west, Wow, what what a lot going on! But here's just a picture, Alan, with your pictures. I wanted to point out. So yeah, uh, great picture. Those those are always neat to have for class too. And and if we determine what actually happened, those are those are very yeah. valuable. Um, and uh, getting them analyzed. So yeah, one of the I got behind me here. I actually I have. Uh, so I've actually got a gear. I don't know if you can how, how you can see that. Turn it a little oh, yeah. bit. But you can see here. So this is one. This actually this gear. Actually, the technician actually put too much oil in the gearbox, and you can see how it flattened the teeth out. And I'll, I got another one back here, the mate to it, and you can see how smooth that actually is on the face of it. Looks but polished. those are mating gears. <laughs> wow. This truck actually was was still running when they took these out. It's like, yeah, we'll pass pump test, but it was still pumping. It was close to passing, and I can't believe it even run with those. But um, that came from from too much oil. So they overfilled the gearbox. They actually put the oil in through the breather tube at the top. Um, and it had way too much oil and it got really hot. Um, most of the time those, those teeth will mushroom out. And uh, of course, at some point in time, they have to, something has to give somewhere. Um, so that's what, that's what that gear is actually from. So, wow. So if, if I find a little bit of oil underneath the truck, I should probably make sure somebody's looking you, at it because it can look, have very detrimental impacts to the gearbox. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and, and you need to make sure you check that on a regular basis. I mean, it's in our it's in our forms and things that, that you're supposed to check on a regular basis, and and uh, I, I recommend a monthly. Again, it's a piece of equipment. It's man-made. Um, people, listen, you hate to think somebody messes with equipment, you know, for any reason, but you know, people forget things. They don't put plugs back in. You know, sometimes they just leak. I mean, right. you get things happen. You know, you might hit a you might hit a stick in the road that loosened up the plug or something. So yeah, anytime you see anything on the floor in the firehouse, it, it definitely needs to be addressed, no matter what. Well, and a lot of us uh, firemen out there, we we check the oil in our vehicles. We check our you know we do basic maintenance on our own vehicles, but then sometimes we we get on duty and go. Uh, mechanical, he can deal with that. I don't want to, I'm going to turn a blind eye. Like, no, that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, there's no reason for that, right? We want our stuff to last and, right. and be reliable. And how do we do that? We take care of it. So take care of it. Yeah, this, PM, yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy to roll under and take the plug out and look. I mean, it's, it's, it, you yeah. do have to get under the truck to do it, but it's still, it's, uh, it's a necessity. It really is to keep those things operational. Awesome, awesome. So, right. Well, Alan, uh, hey, you know, at the beginning of the show, because uh, because we're starting to run a little long on time here, but you were talking a okay. little bit about hey, some new things that that you were doing and you're working on at Hale, uh, and within the IDEX Fire and Safety to uh, uh, to give some other options for training. Sure, sure, yeah. So I'm I'm pretty excited um, during this COVID period. I've been I've actually been home since March. Um, until the last couple of weeks, uh, I actually have been out um, looking at some customers' equipment in the last couple of weeks. But um, I've been pretty much at home, um, and I have actually started making videos. Um, we had a bunch that we'd already done um, just for different products and things, but we decided 
to do online classes. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about this because I think this is a way to reach more people. Um, we want the people that use our products or even thinking about using our products um, that they're able to go out and get the information they need. And so what we've designed is an online training program. Um, it is not complete yet. I won't say that up front. Um, there are currently seven uh, classes available on online. Um, I'm going to release that hopefully by Monday sometime. Um, it is officially not released yet, but it will be um, again. And we're going to add classes to that uh, weekly. Um, it'll actually have uh, electronics training on it. Uh, we're going to try to focus these classes towards both the F3, the F4, and the F4A, because uh, we, we believe that technicians, that, that knowledge that we're giving them, um, they need their EBT certifications. Um, you know, that's the standard we're, we're all trying to live by, the NFPA regulations and, and the standards. So we felt like as we did this, we wanted to make sure that the technicians got the information that they needed. And, and I should say technicians, but, you know, we do see, I get a lot of women in class. I get a lot of women firefighters and technicians today too. Um, and so we get military, we get all kinds of people that just are curious about fire pumps. And this is another way for us to touch those people and get them the information they need and training they need. Um, you know, a simple thing as, as changing the O-rings in our VPS shifter, knowing what those, what the sounds are, or what to look for if you have a leak. Um, that's gonna, that's one of the first videos you'll get to see. Um, our, our weekly, yearly, monthly type um, of services um, are, are some of the first ones, again, that you'll get to see there as well. Uh, you'll go through each seal section, and they're not very long, but probably the longest one's 10 minutes. Um, so it allow you to do that. You'll take a little exam after it. Uh, we're going to set up a tier system. The idea is to set it up in a tier system. So after you pass each level, um, you'll get a certification from Hale. Um, and there'll be like a master type um, certification for those who can make it all the way through and pass all the classes and stuff. So again, it's just, I'm pretty excited. It's just a good way to get our information on our products and, and our repair information out. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, again, shoot me an email. Uh, I'll be happy to get you signed up and uh, underway with some of that stuff. So really, really excited about the, the thing. So we're still going to do some classes again as soon as COVID allows us to. We'll go back to having some face-to-face -face classes. And I love to have people come to the factory. Um, that, is, that is so exciting when I get to bring people to the factory to show them what we can do and, and what we're trying to do there. So um, Al, that's I can, all. I can speak re regionally, but... But there is quite yeah. a list of people that are ready to yeah. see the factory and that are ready to go to one of your classes. So right, uh, right. you're going to be busy for a while, I think. <laughs> I think so, too. I think so, too. Well, Alan, Al Alan, thank you so much for joining us on the Jump Seat. For those of you uh, who are watching, Alan's contacts are below. And normally, Alan does in-person classes on a monthly basis uh, at Hale uh, in Ocala, Florida directly. They have a, a great training lab and training facility there and they get your hand on the pumps, tear them apart, put them together, go do pump tests. Uh, and as you said, it, it helps to meet the EVT uh, classifications and certifications, but great stuff you're doing there to put it online. And and for those of you who are, who are watching today who were really kind of critical of our autopsy, hopefully you get a little better understanding of, hey, your pump's dead? Here's some reasons why. Let's try not letting them happen again in the future. Uh, so you right. can make sure that critical piece of machinery is ready to work every time you need it. Alan, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you in the jump seat. And uh, John, hey guys, you, thank uh, you. Yeah. you take it away and wrap us up. Awesome. Like. Alan, thanks again. And we will hopefully see you again one of these days. We'll get yeah. you back here. So take care Thanks, and have Greg. a good weekend. All right. Great information as always. Uh, and that's the whole point of why we do this, Dave. So I, I hope that everybody is able to learn something or polish up on something maybe, maybe they didn't understand as as in-depth as they did today. And and really, we're just scratching the surface at the same time. There's so much more to, to go over. And, and I hope with time, we can uh, continue to elaborate on certain topics that are that are important, just like this one. So, uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, today, uh, today is yeah, 18th, which means next week's we're going to be the, it'll be the 25th, I think, uh, for episode 23. So we'll be back here uh, again, same place, same time. Uh, hope you can join us. And for those in the, that were le uh, leaving comments, thank you. We, we didn't get to address all of them today, but um, feel free to throw them on there. We will see them. And if you guys have 
other guests that uh, you'd like to see in the jump seat, fire them away. We'd love to uh, to continue building this movement and creating shared knowledge and information for everybody in the fire service so we can all do our job better and leave it better than we found it. So, um, Dave, that's, that's all I've got. If nothing else, stay well, everybody, and uh, we will see you next time. See you guys next week.